The planet is important. That's mm -hmm. something we can't put off till tomorrow. It's something we have to deal with in our economy today. And if we're going to build a new economy, it should have that as part of its uh, outcome is to make a better planet. There's man-caused effects that are accelerating climate change. But we also have to balance that with how do we live. And, you know, one of the thoughts, one of the things that's always big in blockchain, and I, it kind of upsets me that the people in this industry fight amongst themselves between do we do proof of stake because it's low energy or proof of work. Well, instead of fighting between those two, my question is, what is the entire carbon footprint and cost, energy cost, of the entire global banking system? That's what we should be looking at, right? It's inefficient, but it takes a lot of power, and it produces a lot of carbon, and technology has caught up with them and surpassed them sometimes in their usage. So how do we move into that world? And how do we create this without having that centralized control? We've had a lot of uh, um, questions about uh, you know, energy costs and such, because we, we do do a proof of work um, uh, consensus along with proof of stake. It is a hybrid. You can read all about it in our white paper. But security is very important, and I don't care what anybody tries to tell you. You cannot stop long-term attacks with just proof of stake. It's impossible. And you can go back a couple of years, you can get the signatures or the, the private keys. People will give up private keys very easily if they don't think they're of any value anymore. You can start a block at that, uh, start a new chain at that block, do the work. It's just signatures. You're just signing more blocks, signing more blocks. There's no work that's done to it. You become the longest chain. Now, every new node by default is going to join the longest chain. Sooner or later, the old nodes come over and you've just taken over a proof of stake. Now, is that probable? Probably not. But the most important question is, is that impossible? And the answer is no. And if its answer is no, and you want to go and put the entire world financial systems on this system, you better make sure that the answer to is it impossible is yes. Otherwise, there's no, no going forth with it. So we do have to do proof of work. Proof of work is the way that you get long-term security out of the blockchain. Now, the way that we've uh, uh, architected this, and this is Dave again with, uh, and he basically did a multi-core processor on the blockchain, uh, used the same architecture. It allows us to scale and produce in parallel. So uh, what we look at, and I'm just going to go ahead and, and say, okay, we're, we will either have 500 or 1,000 shards out there. And it depends on if there's 128 or 256 uh, nodes per shard. We're finalizing that, that number now. Um, but the ultimate goal is 128,000 nodes plus. That's, the, that's where we'd like to hit as a minimum. And that'll give us a, uh, what we believe is retail acceptable speed on settlement. That means that the money, not only did I purchase this or the transaction happen, it's not transaction per second, it's how long did it take for that transaction to settle? And we're looking for a 15 second. Now the question is, is the world uh, patient enough to wait at the counter at a convenience store to pay for their Coke? Is 15 seconds too long to do that? We hope not because of all the security that comes with it. But there's where the security comes in, that's where the proof of work comes in. So on scaling that, if you look at it, if we're doing one block every 15 seconds, and then that means that we're doing four blocks per minute. So a, a Bitcoin block takes 10 minutes to produce. We can do 40 blocks per shard. And because of our DPOW, the distributed proof of work, we're hash braiding the block or the hash from each shard with every other shard out there. So that means now in, we're producing, uh, if we have 1,000 shards and we're doing four per minute, that's 4,000 per minute on all 1,000 on all shards. And now if we're doing that times 10, that means that we're producing 40,000 blocks per individual one Bitcoin block. That means the efficiency is 40,000 times greater per block, or the power being consumed per block is 40,000 times less than the power being consumed for one individual Bitcoin block. We will never get around not having to use the power. Running CPUs or running GPUs or running ASICs 
is going to take power. And 10 minutes of power is 10 minutes of power. But we can make it more efficient. Yeah. And we, I mean, as far as the applications that can work on that, there's just a tremendous number of things that require that kind of speed in order to execute. Absolutely. 